You know that saying one man's meat is another man's poison? Well, it's very true. While many Africans are trying to leave the African continent and find their way in America to pursue greener pastures, many black Americans are trying to find their way back to the African continent. And this is not just a trip to reconnect with nature and the motherland. This is a very holistic trip because not just a trip but relocation because they're not only looking for a sense of belonging but they're looking for safety they're looking for oneness they're looking for a place where they belong they're looking for a place where they can do business and thrive without being looked at in a certain type of way they're looking for a place where the system is not committed to holding them down and bringing them down in every possible way there was just this increasing racial tension in the united states that had me thinking about myself and then my son of what kind of life I wanted to have for him and legacy I wanted to have for him. And I just didn't want to raise him in a society where he's being constantly bombarded with the ugliness of racism every single day. And the more and more I would come to Ghana for those immersion trips for my organization, the harder it was for me to go back to the States because I was experiencing what freedom felt like, just to be free. And then going back to a place where I'm now confined to the color of my skin Regardless of whether or not there's opportunities to prevail and succeed, it was still that constant subconscious understanding that I'm different. And around 2000 and, was it 16 or 17? I don't remember, but I had a conversation with my wife and I said, you know what? I think the next place in our journey is Ghana. Mm -hmm. So we started planning. It took several years of planning. It wasn't just a fly by night decision. If you're, if you're listening, okay, this was years of planning. And then we uh, made that decision. December 4th, 2019, we arrived in Ghana. It was a dream come true because, you know, you know for folks out there watching, if, 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 if you set a goal and you're working towards that goal for so long, for like years and years and years, you keep seeing this reality in your mind so that when it actually manifests itself, it's like, it's almost surreal. It's like, is this, is this really happening? So for the first couple months, I mean, I would wake up and I would just be like, wow. We're in Africa. Hello there, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of our conversations. My name is Sandero Ganga. I'm a business journalist by profession and a digital content creator. I love coming on here, talking to you guys about black people, Africans, our empowerment, and how we can rise up and take our rightful place at the global stage. You can connect with me on social media, at Sandero Ganga, across all platforms. Let's get into today's video. When I was living in Ghana, I used to do these interviews where um, I would just, I dubbed them living in Ghana. And I would look for foreigners from the diaspora community that have opted not just to visit, but relocate to the African continent. I found this really interesting. You know why? Because most of the time we are, as Africans, majority of us, we're trying to go to America because this is a place where opportunities are endless. This is according to what we've been told or what we believe. Oh. So please, if you're American, correct us if we are wrong, right? In the comment section. We believe that this is a place of endless opportunities. We believe that this is a place of fair wages. We believe that this is a place of meritocracy. We just believe that this is a place that we can build up. And even I, I will not lie, there was a time where I, I literally lost hope in the continent and I was like, I cannot do this anymore. I want to leave. I genuinely want to leave because I don't see why somebody of my talent and my skill set is struggling yet I could be at a place where if I put in the right amount of work, things could align for me. Wishful thinking, I know. Correct me in the comment section with the reality that is. But then again, there are people who are coming from that very place that we so desperately want to go. What's the disconnect? And when I began talking to these people, I realized, oh man, we've really romanticized America. The movies that we watch, you know, the news that we watch, the perception that we have of that place. This is not to, to, to downplay all the good things that are happening there. But then we look at it from a very myopic point of view and that is not the case. And I spoke to several people, but one person stood out for me. His name is Tim. And, you know, it was very interesting to talk to Tim because Tim is a family man. And it's when you're alone, it's very easy to just, you know, pack your bags, go, it's going to be an adventure and it's going to be cool, cool. But when you have a family, then you have to think twice about moving these people. 
And you know, the first time that he had people coming to Africa for a trip, he was like, okay, cool, I'll go see what's happening in Africa, lions and poverty and all that stuff. And then he got here and realized, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Actually, this is a place with people, with modern infrastructure, civilization, and just, it's a whole ecosystem on its own. Outside of very few people, very many people, rather not few, very many people know very little about Africa. But then when you come, you realize it's a whole world, you know, it's a whole world on its own. And it's, it's a pleasant surprise for very many people that come here. And you realize, particularly, let's say, for example, Ghana, the people are warm, the people are kind, the people are loving, the people are caring. You know, there's just this air of happiness and jovialness in the country. The food, the depth of flavor in their food, the culture, the fashion, the, the, the scenery that the country offers you. And you're like, wow, this is actually Africa. Then you quickly realize that there's a huge gap in terms of perception, you know, um, how you perceived Africa when you're in America versus the Africa that you get to experience, two different things. Then another thing that comes up is you realize, oh, wow, there's no racial tension here. Actually, I can be a black person here. I can be black as black can get and nobody cares because all of us are just black people. Nobody is going to stop you because you're black. Nobody is going to judge you because you're black. Unless you commit a crime and break the law, you're not going to be singled out because of the color of your skin. And this can be a breath of fresh air for many because of what has happened in America in the, I don't even want to say in the ways and past, the last 400 years have been hell for black people, you know. And then you just get to a place where you're reconnecting with the continent and your African roots. You get to go to the slave castles where the slaves came out and you're taking back your power and you get to retrace your roots. You get to see the food, you get to trace your genealogy and you're like, oh wow, actually I belong in this place. And you find that you can integrate in these societies. It's not easy, it has its own challenges, but you can actually live and integrate here. You can live here, you can find local foods that you can eat, then you can blend it with your American dishes once in a while. You find that healthcare might not be the best, but sometimes you can find private care that works, good education, and you're like, I could live here. I could actually live here. And when you weigh the pros and the cons, you're like, you know what? I'm going to try Africa for a couple of years. Like my lifelong dream to you know, go back home to the motherland and reconnect with my roots. And so I did. And uh, in that seven weeks, that was 2007. And in that seven weeks that I was here, my life was transformed. My ideas about myself, about African history, about my standards of beauty, um, about our historical memory and intellect, all of that was transformed. And for the first time in my life, um, I felt like a human being disconnected from the color of my skin, and it was transformational. Mm -hmm. And uh, so from since then, you know, Ghana has had a place in my heart. Yeah, so it took some time, you know. Um, for me, I was visiting for maybe about 10 years at this point. I, I had a nonprofit organization that was operating here, mobilizing people to the continent, as well as doing um, civic engagement work in rural communities in Ghana. So I already had kind of like a you know some in-depth experience but really what happened was um, there was just this increasing racial tension in the United States that had me thinking about myself and then my son of what kind of life I wanted to have for him and legacy I wanted to have for him and I just didn't want to raise him in a society where he's being constantly bombarded with the ugliness of racism every single day and the more and more I would come to Ghana for those immersion trips for my organization the harder it was for me to go back to the States because I was experiencing what freedom felt like just to be free and then going back to a place where I'm now confined to the color of my skin regardless of whether or not there's opportunities to prevail and succeed it was still that constant subconscious understanding that I'm different and around 2000 and was it 16 or 17 I don't remember but I had a conversation with my wife and I said you know what I think the next place in our journey is Ghana. Mm -hmm. So we started planning. It took several years of planning. It wasn't just a fly-by-night decision if you're, if you're listening, okay? This was years of planning. And then we uh, made that decision. December 4th, 2019, we arrived in Ghana. It was a dream come true because, you know, you know, for folks out there watching, 
if, 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 if you set a goal and you're working towards that goal for so long, for like years and years and years, you keep seeing this reality in your mind so that when it actually manifests itself, it's like, it's almost surreal. It's like, is this, is this really happening? So for the first couple months, I mean, I will wake up and I'll just be like, wow, we're in Africa. Like, like we're actually living here. And it was, it was, it was really exhilarating and exciting. Um, and I'll say that I think we came at the right time because shortly after- Well, this is not just a story of team. This is a story of very, very many black Americans and people from the diaspora in general that have decided to try out Africa. And while some have not been successful in their effort to relocate, there's so many that have been successful and are trying to make a life for themselves on the African continent. And I think that's something beautiful that we should talk about and celebrate more often. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Indira Ganga. Connect with me on social media at Indira Ganga on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Like this video, give it a thumbs up. It goes a long way in showing the algorithm that you're enjoying the content. And also comment down below what your thoughts are. Would you ever consider relocating back to the African continent? And if so, what would be the things that you would look out for in the African country that you would want to immigrate? to finally share this video with a friend you never know who it will touch or who it will speak to thank you so much i'll see you again next time